Cystic fibrosis, also known as mucoviscidosis, is a genetic disorder that primarily affects the respiratory and digestive systems. Even though it's considered a rare disease, it's most often diagnosed in early childhood. At the core of this condition is a mutation in the CFTR gene, which leads to a dysfunctional CFTR protein. In this context, think of the CFTR protein as a gatekeeper that controls the flow of water in and out of a garden. In cystic fibrosis, this gatekeeper is faulty, releasing too much water and causing the garden to become muddy, making it difficult for plants to thrive. Similarly, this malfunction leads to the production of thick, sticky mucus, causing frequent airway infections. The three main characteristics of the disease are this excessive mucus, repeated lung infections, and insufficient pancreatic function affecting digestion. Signs of the disease often appear during infancy, usually as a bowel obstruction with meconium. Despite a regular diet, children with this condition commonly have difficulty gaining weight. Importantly, over 75% of cystic fibrosis cases are diagnosed before the age of two. As these children grow older, they start to exhibit respiratory symptoms such as coughing, wheezing, and frequent lung infections. In adults, the disease tends to worsen, resulting in chronic respiratory issues, a decline in lung function, and ongoing digestive problems. Other symptoms can include chronic sinusitis and a salty taste to the skin. If a child has recurring infections, coughs up thick mucus, and has difficulty clearing their lungs, these are warning signs. Such children often require antibiotics to treat repeated occurrences of pneumonia. A unique symptom of cystic fibrosis is a salty taste when kissing the child's cheek, due to increased sweat production. Medical advancements have improved life expectancy, although it remains below average. Risk factors include being of Caucasian ethnicity and having both parents carry the mutated genes. New mutations are rare but can occur. For diagnosis, the primary method is the sweat test, which measures chloride levels in sweat. High levels, usually above 60 millimoles per liter, indicate the presence of cystic fibrosis. Genetic testing offers another, albeit more expensive, diagnostic avenue. Elevated levels of immunoreactive trypsinogen, IRT, in newborn blood tests can also be indicative. There's no one-size-fits-all treatment. Common therapies include Airway clearance techniques, these help remove mucus from the lungs. Antibiotics, essential for treating lung infections. CFTR modulators, like Ivacafter, these aim to correct the CFTR protein function to some extent. Their effectiveness varies, but some patients experience up to a 50% improvement in lung function. Pancreatic enzyme supplements. These aid in digestion and often enhance nutrient absorption. High-dose antibiotics, effective for severe infections, though efficacy decreases over time due to antibiotic resistance. Mucolytics, such as pulmozyme, these are generally less effective than CFTR modulators. Emerging evidence suggests that antioxidants and vitamins may also help, although their effectiveness is inconsistent. Always consult a healthcare provider before starting any treatment. To sum up, around half of individuals with cystic fibrosis live past the age of 40. Unfortunately, respiratory failure accounts for about 85% of cystic fibrosis-related deaths. Other key insights include the potential for the disease to cause male infertility, liver disease, and a heightened risk of diabetes. Regular physical activity is also crucial for managing the disease.